the beavers have cut down a tree across our road. Okay, wait a minute, Frankie. What's wrong with the chainsaw? Huh? Something's gotta be wrong with it, right? Oh yeah, I don't think they're... See, I just... We made it, Lucy. All right. Woo! Okay. So we're out. There's our deer hunting stand. And this is about as raw as we get. And the beavers have cut down a tree across our road. So we've got, we've got to fix it. And there was a young beaver on top of it. So let's take a look at what the beaver did. You can see right there. Dropped it right across the trail. So how do you think we can tell it was a young beaver? It's not science. Here, I'll explain it. See how, how short it is? Uh, an older beaver is taller. He would cut the tree, he would have gnawed the tree up there more. because I just recently figured out that not everybody realized Red Max actually makes chainsaws. They're familiar with their blowers and they've got almost a cult following for those. Not everybody knew that they made chainsaws. Frankie's gonna have this going before I can. This is by no way a Red Max sponsored video. They have no clue I'm doing this. And today we're gonna share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly about these Red Maxes. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. I went on the Red Max website and was doing a little bit of research and found out that they make nine different models of these, both residential and commercial. But here's the question. On their commercial chainsaws, they offer a one-year unlimited warranty. I've never actually heard of that from any other manufacturer before. My question is, have you guys ever heard of anybody else offering a warranty like that? So I'm going to address the white elephant in the room. Frankie does not have the right PPE on. And you know what? Normally, I don't have the right PPE on either. And the reason we're doing that is not because we want, we don't want you guys to be safe. It's because it's just natural to us. It's the way we were born and raised. You guys, you don't get it. Most of you guys don't even understand that when we were growing up, didn't have any money for PPE. You barely had a chainsaw. An old Johnson root is what I ran forever. And so I want to show you guys what you guys need to do. I want you guys to be safe. Don't do what we do. You know, you're going to need chaps, you're going to need a hard hat, face shield, ear hearing protection, cut proof gloves. Keep yourself safe. Just because you see Frankie and I doing it doesn't mean that it's the right way to do it. Oh, and speaking of the right way to do it, here's another thing. A lot of you guys like to come on here and tell me we don't know how to cut wood. And yeah, we're not professional arborists. You will see a video coming out with professional arborists where we're actually using a tree, uh, a crane and rigging it and doing that whole thing. We're two guys that have ran chainsaws for, I don't know, I'm 48. I probably ran chainsaw for at least 32, 33 years. And Frankie about, he's 10 years older than me. So he's ran it for about 48, 50 years. So we got a little bit of experience under our belts. So you want to tell us we don't know how to run chainsaw? Go ahead. I really don't care what you say. So here's the scenario. It's not if this tree is going to hit my shed right there. It's when, it's aiming directly at it. Pretty much lined up perfectly to drop right straight on it. But here, it gets better. Look at what the woodpeckers have done to this thing. This thing's one 
solid puff and this is going to drop straight down so let's see if we can keep it from doing that we're gonna have a little bit of fun with these two trees the first one we're gonna put a rope on it and pull it to get it to go in the right direction but the second tree we're just going to cut even though it's leaning toward the shed I'm going to attempt to cut it to get it to drop but then I'm going to put my camera exactly where I want this tree to hit well about eight inches away from where I want it to hit so I'm gonna get the tree I'm gonna to try to get the tree to drop right next to my camera without smacking it dropped her just about exactly where we wanted to I should have put that stick out there oh, all right well we'll take the rope off and I'll finish cutting it up so instead of the stick I'm gonna put my camera right next to where I want this tree to drop so hopefully this goes right it won't smash my camera like it did one other time before it should drop this tree right next to it. So you can see that the tree is leaning to the right side of this screen. I'm going to try to change the course of direction on this thing and get it to drop straight at you guys. This should be pretty cool, hopefully. because I had it I had the camera position so I would hopefully come as close to it as possible <laughs> even though I got the tree leaning like way off kitty wampus yeah it wasn't that close so right now I want you to listen to the chainsaw you'll hear that they're not exactly tuned in coming out of the factory now Frankie and I mess around with these chainsaws for weeks and later on in this video you're going to hear a big difference and we also stopped using the Red Max fuel and we think that also contributed to the chainsaws running better but I'm just going to let you listen to it right now. in your hands of this Red Max is my dad used to say it's like driving a Cadillac to me it's just smooth like butter I love these Red Maxes Frankie on the other hand he's not as sold on them as I am the balance and handling even on a big chainsaw like this it's really actually nimble and well balanced. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. So we're gonna get this tree cut up and cleaned up then we're gonna head back out into the field where that beaver dropped the tree across the road. We're gonna let you listen to one of the other chainsaws that is slightly out of tune. You're gonna see a noticeable decrease in performance but it's not something that you have to live with or even bring back to the shop. We're going to show you how right out in the field you can tune it up and get that thing humming like it's supposed to be. question for you guys this chainsaw sounds a little doggy to me this has not been tuned up we this is straight out of the factory 
What do you guys think? Does, how does the chainsaw sound to you guys? Now I know 90% of you already know this, but there's going to be new guys watching this that may have never heard this next one. Never put your chainsaw into the dirt at all. It will dull it immediately. If you watch closely, you'll see Frankie's making the majority of his cuts from the top, but not cutting it all the way clean through. What he's doing is he's making the top cut, then rolling the log over and finishing that cut from the other side. That way he's not getting his chainsaw into the dirt and getting it dull. It's just a simple thing, but not everybody knows the simple rule. So we're gonna leave all of this for the beaver, cause that'll be his food to build his dams with. And we'll finish cleaning all this up. So what didn't you like about the big one, Frankie? It's only got one bolt. Okay, so show me what you're talking about here. Right here. Well, uh, that keeps uh, everything, that yeah, keeps uh, this all tight. The bar and the chain, you know. Okay. And then this thing the, seems to uh, loosen up. Kind of. Kind of quick? Quick, yeah. Well, that, does that one have two? Yeah, now the big one now, that's got two. Oh, the biggest one has yeah. two. All right, I'm gonna jump in. I wanna show you guys what Frankie's talking about. On the other chainsaw, see, this is the biggest one, the G9000. They have the two nuts here, which makes everything tightened up. On the other chainsaw series, they only have the one, and I just wanna take the time to point that out. So there it is. I didn't see like my, like the steels that I got, even if they're small or big, they got the two. They got two, and okay. I just kinda like that idea with the two, because I think that's why that, I blew that chain off of there that the other time. Okay. So what about anything you like about the chainsaw? Well, I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to uh, adjust the carb on that. You know, obviously it was running. See, she running was running a little rough. Yeah. Okay. And once I, otherwise I, I think she's gonna have plenty of power. It just needs to be adjusted, I think. a tough knot. Gotta be wrong with it, right? Oh, yeah, I don't think they're. I didn't, I didn't do no adjusting to them. This is still the way they came. Okay. So I think you guys just gotta fine tune them. Just seemed like there was no power in that right. thing. Yeah, it just, it's just getting too much gat. You know, it's you gotta lean it out a little bit. Uh, get it, get it well, so right it hits. Here, the low. Here's your low. Here's your adjustment right there. Your high, which that's the one we gotta adjust. Uh, do I got a little screwdriver? Now I know most of you know this, but not everybody does. If your chainsaw isn't running quite right, and you're not getting the power out of it like we are in this case, you can adjust the carb right out in the field with just a screwdriver. You don't have to pull everything apart. 
one screwdriver and you can get it to hum just the way you want it. So, because we've got lack of power now, which way are you going to adjust? Are you going to make it richer or, or leaner? Um, if you can get in there with that big thing. I think I can. So she's pretty sharp. We'll just show them the chips. Now are these? Oh yeah, it's it's actually chewing them up pretty good. So that's the chips. So you can tell she's sharp because she's yeah, not they, spitting out dust. fine dust. So so she just needs to be tuned in a little, tuned bit. In a little bit to get the power up there. So. Yeah. <laughs> So why were you trying to adjust it while it was running, Frankie? Because that's what you can tell uh, with, with the high jet, with the yeah, low and high, whatever. Idling um, is usually you set the low, your low, but then when you have it wide open, you can tell it'll, it'll just, it'll quit. You know, I mean, it'll like, it seems like to me it's getting too much gas. So you know, the small one, down. the yeah. small one, since it's bogging so then you down, can lean it down, lean it down a little bit with the screw, but you won't know unless you can hear it. Okay. So that's why I have it wide open. So would you recommend though to guys to to have it running while they're trying to adjust it because that yep. seems dangerous to nope. me? That's the only way you're good. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, normally it's supposed to be I think two and a half screws out. If you sell, if you put that screw all the way in. You back it out two and a half, that's the place to start anyways, if you, you know. Okay. And then from that point, you can adjust, you know. Now, you were saying that not all. No, not all of them dock your, your adjustment screws. Um, most, God, I want to say most chainsaws do, but like your, your weed whips and stuff like that, nope. Some, some will let you adjust it, otherwise it comes factory. Do you like the fact that you can adjust these, or? Yeah, yeah, you bet, yep. Because it's just, as, as the motor gets older and wore out, you know, you might need a little bit more, you know, the carburetor gets wore out, you might have to adjust the gas. You know? So what happens on other ones where you can't adjust it and the, the chainsaw gets older, you're just stuck? Or put a carburetor in it, or put a different carburetor on it that is adjustable. Okay, so you can't get the life out of them no, unless you switch no. carburetors. I on bought the a brand new leaf, uh, weed whip, brand new, out of the box, and, it, and, it, and I couldn't adjust the deals. Yeah, and it ran like from the day day one. I, I just ended up smashing, mad and smashed it because there was no adjustments to it. There was no adjustment. You could not adjust that carburetor. Which brand was that? That was a green one. Um, yeah, that's a like green. green. Yeah, is that the green one that's in my garage? No, no, no. I mean, I smashed it. I smashed <laughs> it. It no longer is around. Um, so I don't make crappy tools, or otherwise um, Frankie's going to smash them. Ace Hardware is the one that I bought it from. <laughs> So whatever they sell for the green one. Yeah, because I mean, normally they like these it should come factory setting. Like I think it's two and a two and a half screws out. And you got to count your screws, you know, because you, some guys you only half a screw, you know, that's only half a turn, you know. I mean, so you got to one, two, you know, not just you know. Oh, not not gas. No. Okay. So I think uh, most of the time that's where, like, if you're screwing around and you, and you get it way out of whack, you better have screw it all the way in and come out that two and a half and then that gives you a good starting point i'm guessing that they could go on uh, online and, oh, and, and find out exactly how to oh, tune yeah. them up yeah nowadays yeah you should be able to find anything out yeah well, can you find out where my dog went because nope. she's missing I'm lucy
All right. Because I got Gary which, driving. So which way are you guys going? I'm going to go this way. Am I, in your, I can go right to am I in your way? Uh, no, I can get around this. All right. So, all right, I'll talk to you later. Okay, we'll see you, Frankie. Right. Lucy! <whistles> How many of you want to bet she ran all the way home? I mean, we are out here a ways. We're... Hey, want some no, I'm good. Thanks, Frankie. I mean, we're out here a long way. And I think she got bored and ran home. Should we find out? Besides, I want to get out of here. There's seven or eight bear out here. And now I don't even have a chainsaw with me. <laughs> get, I'm getting out of here. I don't have a chainsaw. I don't have a dog that's barking. This is a barking dog actually will keep him away. So I'm just gonna go. Let's take off. Yep, there she is. Already home waiting for us. Don't yell at me, you were the one that took off. What? You left me, I didn't leave you. You left me. Hey right, Frank, you've been running this thing for a couple weeks now and you finally got it to a sweet spot? I think so, I mean, for I'm happy with it right now. Anyways, it runs, I mean, it done a little adjusting to the carburetor and I, you know. So, I don't use the Red Max fuel anymore. I just I use my mixture. Why don't you use their fuel? Because it just seemed like run didn't run at its peak. Okay. I don't know if it just. I don't. I don't know. So we were running pure Red Max fuel. Fire it up. Let's listen to her hum once. Let's see. This is cold starting right now, you guys. Yeah. So we'll see how well she does cold starting. This should start okay though. <laughs> Let's let's cut. Let's try cutting it and putting a little, making it work a little bit, and hearing how it sounds. Okay. Because that's really how you can tell. I mean. Right, and after they're warmed up, if they rev them, and that's how I set the carb, anyways. Get down, Charlie. So. <coughs> it took. So it took a while to get it to until you found its sweet spot, right? Well, but not, but it, not being my saw, I didn't want it. You know, I don't like screwing around with it, but I just got tired of the way it was running. So I just, yeah, I just started messing with the carburetor. That makes sense. All right. Compression button. You push that in before you even start pulling it over. It's so much easier to pull it over. Okay. Shouldn't need that no more. Some guys are going to be like, that's dry wood. That's not a fair test. Well, it's all, yeah. we, it's all we got right now, guys. <laughs> Right. Ours, you know, where right. It may be ain't at its perfect yet, but it's a lot better than what it was. Right. Okay. So right out of the gate, they're gonna need a little bit of tuning, is what we've discovered. This one, or all three of them actually did. All three, and you're not running their Red Max fuel because you think it's not I don't giving think it's it. Right mixture. Uh, to me, it ain't. Right. Okay. So and then that way, I don't have to have two mix, two different types of mixtures. So I what, still take my steels with me. What are you doing different with their fuel then? I don't know what they mix. There's a. I'm mixing mine at 32 to one. 32 to 1. I think theirs is at 40 or 50 to 1. Yeah. I think it's too lean. Yeah. I, I, for me, I mean, it just it doesn't it seem to run good. I, mean, I cut down a pretty good size stump. It probably was, I don't know, 35, 36 inches across or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, that had all the power in the world to go around it. I mean, just, just, just to cut, you know. After you tuned it up. After, yep. yep. Just yesterday. Yep, yesterday. Yep. But before that? I would have fought, I think. It just didn't have it. It just didn't seem to have it. didn't seem to run right. But... 
I mean, they're, they're good. I mean, I'm, I'm actually impressed. I, I like the saw a lot better now that it runs good. Yeah. I mean, there for a while, I was giving up, up hope on it. Yeah, you didn't. Honestly, you didn't like them. You were saying you didn't want to run them. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't even take them out to the woods a couple times. I took my steels. Okay. And now, now I, I throw in not not so much of this one, but the other one, and and my steel goes with me all the time. Okay. Just the, the two. Maybe we should listen to the other one run and cut. That one, yeah. Because we got we got video of it not cutting so hot before. On top though. Oh, okay, so that one has the compression button on top. Now that was the mid-size one. What what is yeah. the what's the number on that? Do we know, Frankie? This is the G five fifty. Five fifty. Okay, and this was the one that was really doggy. Yep. yep. Last In time. My mind it was. Yep. So let's see how it does. Cold start. I've never sharpened this one yet. Okay, so the, the chain's a bit dull, but other but than that. Yeah, see, cuts all right. All right. And, but, and it just it seems to have so much more power than when they when you got them. When, when they came out of the factory? Yeah. Okay, got it. So a little bit of mods, and they're good to go. Yeah, in fact, they are an impressive saw. They are good. They are, like I say, the only thing, that's the only thing right there. I don't like this, this a single bolt. I like the least... Because it seems to loosen up more okay. than my steels. Okay. But now the big one, that's got a double bolt. That double bolt, but everything below that, single bolt. Yep. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, Frankie didn't like them, but after he uh, tuned them up himself, changed the fuel, stopped using the, the fuel that they provided, switched the mixture up, and found the sweet spot on them, I think he nailed it at this point. Yep. So far, yep. This, like I say, yeah. I don't mind taking them out to the woods now. Okay. All right. So that's our experience with the Red Max brand. Tell me what you guys think of the video in the comments down below. Um, what I do with these videos is I don't try to edit out anything, even the learning curve while we're doing it. Cause so you guys see us start with something, maybe not like it. And then slowly as we learn how the, that machine or tool actually works, and then we get to be able to optimize and kind of get familiar with the strengths and weaknesses and how it works better. Well, that's when, when things change, period. I'm not going to hide anything and just show you the good or whatever. I'm just going to show you the process. So tell me, do you like seeing the process? Because that's what this was today. I need to know from you guys. If you want to see us struggle with stuff and figure it out and then good, bad, or whatever happens, that's what I'll keep doing. I did that with a lawnmower sharpening blade and i didn't never seen it before some of you guys absolutely flam flamboyed flamboyed me flamboyed me i don't know whatever but you guys understand that there's always a learning curve to every single tool to actually use it the right way and that's what i like to show that process so anyway that's all i got for today guys god bless go get them and check out the video here and the video here and we will see you guys on the next one yeah uh... What? Well, we were, Chris came up, we, we were cutting and splitting, or not splitting firewood, but just blocking it up, you know? Yeah. So then they went ahead and they took the big saw that I was using, so they just took the big saw and went ahead of me. And I, so I started on that one row that takes a circle, you know, where you got that big burn pile, not the one out here, but yeah. the other one. And I started splitting that oak. Yeah. Caught up to him. <laughs> you can see, I mean, I got a lot of wood. I bet I got two pickup loads of wood split yesterday, besides blocking it. And everything. I worked all day with them guys. In fact, I was out there before them. Who is who is them? Chris and Tom? Yeah. I was probably out there an hour before them blocking wood. Yeah. And when they showed up, I was we were blocking and I was splitting. And I caught up to them and then we went. Hand to splitting? Somewhere. They would no they didn't do no splitting at all. You hand Just split. Me. Yep. You hand, hand split. split. Yep. Two pickup truck loads. Oh yeah. And block.